Hi, I'm Alvin Stardust. I've been in the music business for a long time and had deals with Parlophone Records in the 60s. Because um, shortly after I signed, the Hollies signed, and then the Beatles, and of course the rest is history. Parlophone Records became mega famous along with George Martin and Ron Richards, the producers there. Then in the 70s, I met Peter Shelley, a great writer and producer, and Michael Levy, who managed Magnet Records. Signed with them and they gave me some cracking songs. And uh, Pete was a great writer, it was good fun working with Pete because he used to come up with very, really simple songs with catch. And I remember he came in with this song which kind of just had a bit of a simple riff to it, like. <laughs> song to record and, and it, because it was lucky for us, it went to number one in about eight territories all around the world. And then Pete carried on writing with things like um, Jealous Mine and You You You, Red Dress, Good Love Can Never Die. We had a real good run of hits. And then the 70s kind of went away and the glam rock died and 1981 I got this phone call right out of the blue from who other than Peter Waterman. Peter had been a plugger at Magnet Records when I first started there and we kind of cut our teeth together make, in the big time. Um, and he was looking for people to record songs for a publishing company called ATV Music. And he rang and he said, I've got some cracking songs here. He said, I've got one that's a number one. He said, we've got to record it. And I said, Pete, it's the 80s, the 70s is dead. We'll never get a record deal for me. I said, if you get me where they go, Rolls Royce. Rolls Royce, no one would want it. So he said, no, we'll get it, we'll get it. Anyway, he and my manager, Roy Massey at the time, um, found a studio up in Worcester. And we went in with a fab producer called Peter Collins and we put down a song. We didn't do it the same as it was originally. Originally it was done something. Pretend you're happy when you're blue. It's a lovely ballad. We did it, a bit of rockabilly like a Pretend you're happy when you're blue. We had another number one all over the world, and good old then, then that kind of changed. And I bumped into uh, into Mike Bat. Mike Bat wrote me a fantastic song called "I Feel Like Buddy Holly." Still one of my favourites. I did I did a song by John David called "I Won't Run Away," which was a brilliant country rock song. And then I kind of the eighties disappeared, and the nineties came along, and I started doing some theatre. I played, I had my own pub on Hollyoaks in the first two series. The Dog on the Pond, um, which, was, which was good fun to do with Phil Redman and all those guys up there. And then I, then I did things like, uh, I did a TV series, another TV series with Noddy Holder, good old Noddy, called The Grimleys, if you ever you saw it. I started doing some theatre then. I played Uriah Heep in David Copperfield, um, Phantom. And the last thing I did was Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, where I played the child catcher. Hardly any recording in the meantime. Did a few gigs. And then about three years ago, I started getting my band together again and we started doing some gigs around the place. Um, and then Universal came on and said, how about recording an album? So I said, crikey, I've not been in the studio for ages. So they said, no, nah, it'd be good fun to do. Brian Berg, who runs Universal, said to me, why don't you record some of the songs you've had hits with, some of your favourite songs, and write some more? So I thought, why not? It'd be a good chance for me to write about my career in the business, for instance. So we recorded some greats, things like Cuckoo, Jealous Mind, Red Dress, you name it. Pretend, I Won't Run Away, all those. Um, and then I did some favourites of mine, things like, I don't know if you remember this one, Mick Green was with a guy called Johnny Kidd and the Pirates, one of my mates. <laughs> by Joan Jett. Um, just a great song, great song, I love it. My daughter, Millie, who's eight, said to me, Dad, you should record a new song. I said, like what? Something from the high school musical. So she said, not bad songs. I said, okay, um, Hannah Montana, Miley Cyrus. She said, yeah, no, not quite right. She said, how about Duffy, Mercy? I said, oh, great song. I said, in fact, do you know what? 
It's a 12 bar. It's a rock and roll song. Anyway, we put it to a bluesy kind of rocky beat and it went like this. I love you But I gotta stay true My morals got me on my knees I'm begging you please Stop playing the game Just a three piece, guitar, bass, and drums. Some of the best groups, you know, like Police, The Jam, Cream. Some of my favorite bands were just three piece groups. And I just loved doing the recording. We wrote some new songs. We got a friend called Paul Linton. We scribbled some songs together about things. See, I grew up with Americana. When I was five, I went to the Saturday matinee and saw Roy Rogers and Gene Autry, the singing cowboys, country music, American stuff. I fell in love with horses and guns and cowboys and Indians and Harley Davidson bikes and big American trucks, anything to do with that. Because my film idols were Steve McQueen, uh, Jimmy Dean, Marlon Brando with the Harleys. We wrote songs that were called the one called The Other Side of Me, which is about trucking. Another one, my idol was Elvis Presley. God gave me a chance to write about all my roots in rock and roll because I was, I was born in the East End of London but brought up in Mansfield, Nottingham, a little mining town. So I was born in the city, raised in the country, went to school at St. Peter's. St. Peter taught me how to read and write while Roy and, Roy, Roy and Jean laid the music down. And the hook of the song is about my idol Elvis. It's called My Sweet Elvis. I also I thought someone who's been associated with rock and roll music since I can remember is Jack Daniels. Well, we got to the end of the recording session, we had about 20, 25 minutes left, and I said to the band, you know, we don't have a really up-tempo rocker. I said, Glyn, the guitarist, been with me for years, brilliant world-class player, said, Glyn, give us a kind of a, a ZZ Top rock feel, you know, with a bit, of a, a bit of tempo to it. So he started playing, and Sammy, the drummer, was just amazing, dropped in on the drums. The day the bass player dropped in, I started singing a bit. I thought, whoa, whoa, stop, let me scribble some words down. So I wrote about what happens when we do gigs. See, Every night when we do a gig, but the crew come up and say, two minutes and we're on stage. So we, we, I say, okay, we call the crew in, into the dressing room, we crack open a bottle of Jack, a couple of Cokes, and we toast the king, and we hit the stage running. And that's why the song is called The Reverend Jack Daniels. <laughs> anyway, the album is called I Love Rock and Roll. It's on Universal Records. It's out April the 26th, 2010. Please try and catch some of the songs. I do hope you like the songs. Um, and I hope you like the album. And for me, sitting on my in my front room, it's uh, goodbye from Alvin Starter. See you soon.